I've intended to do something in this vein quite literally since the birth of my channel, and at long last, in the immortal words of Chuck Norris in Invasion USA, it's time. You've seen the mythos, now stand in abject horror as I regale you with my shitty taste. Given that this is black metal, my favorite genre for the record, a cliche top five simply would not do. So drop your frocks and grab your cocks for Razor Fist's top six recommended black metal records. With black metal largely established as a European, if not expressly Scandinavian art form by the late 90s, what was rarely mentioned at the time was that ever since a tape trading relationship between a mouthy New Yorker, Paul Ledney, and Finnish black metal mastermind Nuclear Holocausto of Beharit fame led to the formation of Profanatica, the seeds of US black metal had begun to germinate. Still standouts among the dross and dog shit were unquestionably the exception rather than the rule, and Illinois powerhouse Judas Iscariot was one one such outlier. Formed by Andrew Akhenaten Harris in the early 90s as Heidegger, by the mid 90s it had metastasized as the merciless Judas Iscariot, initially more pensive and introspective, a clear adherent to the cold and bleak school of Norwegian black metal. The band's earlier efforts, if I'm being perfectly frank, bordered on Dark Throne plagiarism. <laughs> And then, as the late 90s gave way to the 2000s, Judas Iscariot found their sound. A non parel hybrid of melodic, open-handed riffcraft of Transylvanian hunger-era Dark Throne with a breakneck ferocity that, thanks to the addition of new drummer Cryptic Winter, resulted in some of the fastest black metal you are ever likely to hear. Before Judas Iscariot broke this ground on the classic Heaven in Flames, black metal seemed to fall into two phylums. The downpaced devotees of Dark Throne and the breakneck brutality of Swedish fair, like Dark Funeral or Sethereal, where spooky riffs were shorn for the sake of expediency and heaviness. This subgenre would later be derisively described as Norse Core. Over the span of three masterful albums of the late 90s and early 2000s, perhaps unintentionally, Judas Iscariot bridged that expanse, melding the aggression and speed of Swedish Norse Core with the more meditative atmospherics of top-shelf Norwegian black metal, and it's a bridge that stands to this day. One bands like Inquisition have been pirouetting the fuck across and ever since, and Judas Iscariot never delivered it quite so effectively as on their final full-length release to embrace the corpses bleeding. A chorus of buzzsaw guitars bites its way through the mix, punctuated by hoary demonic growls with a backbending beat of cryptic winter's percussion throbbing like machine gun fire all the while, as potent a brew in the up-tempo tempest of bathed in clouds of blood... As in pounding down pace affairs like in the valley of death, I am their king. The album is repetitive, but the effect is meant to be hypnotic and intentional. This album draws you into the whirlpool of hellish visions and eternal warfare, cold, magnificent, but brutal all the while. I love this record, and you should too. Next. We grow up so desensitized because it was such a long time ago. The Inquisition, which persecuted, you know, Is it even okay to say the word anymore? I mean, I don't know. That's that, I have a problem with that too. There's this manipulation of of, of, of speech that you can use the N word, but you can't. Uh, you can say Jewish or Jew, but you can't. And I hope those that are outside of black metal, which I'm speaking for my black metal, I hope <coughs> some of you understand that. This is not the only art or music that is going to pick on you. When you 
take the final two Judas Iscariot records at a twist to thrash with just a dash of Norwegian black metal legends immortal out the fuck pops Inquisition, arguably the finest American export in black metal history, and perhaps one of the greatest touring bands in the entire goddamn genre. With a circuitous origin that includes multiple moves to and from South America, and at least one major change in music genre, the end result of the Creative Crucible is a truly unique band that continues to evolve with subsequent releases. After the somewhat by-the-numbers thrash metal of their earlier demos, upon relocating to the United States, founder Dagon hooked up with drummer Incubus. The demonic duo immediately clicked and I swear by God and gentle Jesus, I have never heard a bigger sound from any two human beings in all my years. As I opine on Twitter, Zasthor is one dude and it sounds like it. Burzum is one dude and it sounds like it. Inquisition with just two human beings on stage sounds like a standing fucking army. <laughs> But it wasn't until 2007's nefarious, dismal orations that Inquisition truly defined their sound, pairing macrocosmic psychedelia with dark medieval mysticism with but a few twangs of the guitar Inquisition had redefined their entire sonic makeup. This album is a butt fucking beast, but by far the band's most appealing quality and what elevates it above their earlier and later output for me is how closely it's beholden to Bathory. Bathory is the band that everyone name checks, but nobody sounds anything the fuck like. And at least on nefarious dismal orations, Inquisition are one of the appallingly few who actually goddamn do. <laughs> When I first beheld that opening solo, slathered in reverb, ringing through the night like a funeral dirge, that thudding, thrash-laden percussion, it's the rebirth of Bathory, and I ate it up with a spoon. And here's a neat trick. If you ever feel the need to start full-scale land warfare in any metal forum on God's green earth, and let's be real, who doesn't, ask someone if Inquisition is an American band or Colombian. Metal Mythos assumes no responsibility for any homicides, patricides, or synchronized suicides that may occur in the aftermath of said confrontation. Offer not available in all states. See store for details. <laughs> Without question, the most experimental release, and far and away the most experimental ban on this entire goddamn list, Austria's Abigor is without peer in their respective genre. And that's not mere idol worship, that's a stone-faced acknowledgement that absolutely nobody sounds like these cats, particularly not today. Ceaseless time changes, flourishes of fretcraft, double and even triple guitar harmonies. These are sounds more traditionally reserved for death and math metal, and Abigor have mastered it to a degree many of the aforementioned death metal bands objectively fucking haven't. But it all started on 1999's breathtaking about face channeling the quintessence of Satan. In retrospect, the previous effort, Supreme Immortal Art, had been veering in this more technical, almost mathematical direction at least one year previous. But with longtime vocalist Selenius, yes, the same Selenius that founded the protracted exercise in Lord of the Rings worship that is summoning, and its tendency toward more folksy, ambient interludes, it was almost a foregone conclusion that the sonic schism on the album in question would ultimately manifest in real life. And sure enough, by year's end, Selenius was out smoking pipe weed with Gandalf, and guitarist and founder Peter Kubik had recruited a new vocalist by the name of Thurisaz, who, thanks to the mix, may as well not even have showed the fuck up. The arrangements, guitar harmonies, and percussive assault of Thomas Tannenberg are clearly front and center, while the newbie is reduced to a reverb-caked whisper beneath it all, but by God, it fucking works. It's rare you say this in connection with black metal, but I recommend if you're gonna listen to this album, do so with a decent sound system or a solid set of headphones, because a simple car stereo or an iPhone is gonna miss the jaw-dropping complexities unfolding beneath the machine gun fire and fuzz. <laughs> Ch 
Channeling the quintessence of Satan has proven groundbreaking since release, providing crystal clear inspiration for more recent efforts by the likes of Mayhem and others. Stunning, complex, visionary, incapable of being shackled by the strictures of style or subgenre, while permanently expanding their borders for everyone to follow. Brilliant band! Bitchin' album! Buy it! <laughs> With Norwegian black metal shit in the bedspread in the early 2000s, and Swedish black metal legends coasting on the strength of past glories, it was up to that other Scandinavian moonscape to pick up the bit. Now, Finland boasted black metal since the days of Beherit in the late 80s and early 90s, but by the late 90s, it was apparent that a legitimate movement was spawning in the ice cap mountains of the Lapland. Azagal, satanic war master, but perhaps none more legendary than the hoary hosts of Horna, feasting on the glory days of Gorgoroth. Guitarist Shatraug has been conjuring bleak soundscapes that evoke the bitter cold and maddening isolation of the land in which they were conceived. After a revolving door of vocalists in their nascent stage, even briefly featuring the unmistakable shrieking of Satanic Warmaster himself, the band ascended to a new level entirely when they finally settled on a permanent replacement by the name of Corvus, whose ear splitting shrillery soars throughout this exceptional album, featuring the gibberish onomatopoeic title of Envatnags Eflos. Solf is Gantavne, though I'm sure by complete accident, if you take out every even letter and leave only the odd ones, you wind up with Evangels of Satan, which I think technically makes this the band's only English title release. It's the ravishing riffcraft of Shatraug that drives the train here, with spine-chilling six-string refrains that will bore into your brain for keeps. This is an album that will haunt your waking dreams. <laughs> I really can't recommend this album, this band, or Shatraug's side project Sargeist highly enough, folks. These motherfuckers get it. Next. And everybody else had their own sound, their own way of doing things, whatever. Now we came out and like, now, how many bands have you got doing the black metal scene? The thrash, the thrash metal, death metal, speed metal, black metal. There's hundreds of bands doing it. As I said before, it's not a case of us changing the suit everybody else's needs, it's a case of other people change. We won't change, we do what we do, and everybody is picking up on it. We've been doing gigs in Canada, and Slayer have been in the front row, banging their heads. Pop quiz, how many albums can you conceivably cite that invented an entire genre. Rainbow Rising for Power Metal, Alice Cooper for Shock Rock, The Procol Harem for Prague, the list goes on and on. Now, close your eyes and name one that invented three. Yeah, about as easy as squeezing Precious into a size four cat suit. Now open your eyes, folks. Congratulations, you're goddamn looking at one. Venom are without question the most underrated triumvirate in the history of metal. A band is overlooked in their own genre as in everybody fucking else's. To black metal fans, they're the geezers who invented the name and nothing else. To thrash nerds, they're a mock motorhead that couldn't find a tune with a GPS and a dousing rod. And I'm gonna be straight up about this. If you fall into either faction, Fuck you! You're more wrong than Hulk Hogan giving Brooke a bikini wax. And it all began with the wellspring that is Welcome to Hell. For a band that only coined the term black metal, this record sure as fuck does feature every hellish hallmark from tremolo guitar picking to blast beats to guttural satanic lyrics. But fuck the pioneer status because that's not why it makes this list. This album fucking kills, as in still, as in to this fucking day, the anthemic poison, the titanic title track, the gutter fucking gallop of angel dust. But for my money, the best track in the record isn't even on the record. Well, any version of the record from before the CD re-release, that is, the savage single known simply as Bloodlust. Oh.
But even beyond the vampiric anthem in question, Welcome to Hell slays from toe to titties. Rift-driven, spine-snapping Satanism sears from every chord. Even if their tongue was fucking embedded in their collective cheek, the impression this single record and its infamous follow-up would bring to bear on the burgeoning black metal movement is outright incalculable. The band's attitude and import can be best imparted, I think, through the band's own verbiage. As front band, bassist, and band leader Kronos once famously jibed, our music is power metal, venom metal, black metal, not heavy metal, cause that's for the chicks. <laughs> Next. You know, the first album was uh, better as we sounded at uh, that time. We got the name out. Right. And um, we got to know, you know, we, we went into the studio with Boss, and Boss told us, just blast off, which we did. Yeah, which we did. And uh, we, we uh, with the return, it was like, I was influenced by different things, and it was probably, the reason why the album turned out a little bit different in Wicked was because we were totally drunk during the recording, and we were totally into the dark side of life. Anyone who's paid even marginal mind to the music featured on my show, not to mention my shirt collection, this is about as surprising as a fucking sunrise. But in my eyes, the pinnacle of the black metal genre was achieved early and emphatically by Bathory's jaw-dropping sophomore release, The Return. Revisionist wail about the album being hampered by subpar production, but considering the fact that this is actually the only Bathory release to ever be recorded and engineered in an actual proper recording studio, true fucking story, jackass, look it up, one is forced to confront an immutable truism of first wave black metal, from guitars that bellow like a chorus of chainsaws, to drums that throb beneath the mix like a steam engine, to Quarthon's demonic reverberant croak, The Return sounds that way because black metal is supposed to fucking sound that way. I don't know what's more sad, the turd wave black metal bullshit merchants remain convinced this record is inferior to Under the Sign of the Black Mark, or that the genre it helps spawn has yet to surpass it 31 years fucking hence. And before you bitch, Under the Sign of the Black Mark is great. I want it to carry my babies to term, but come the fuck on, folks. The Rite of Darkness, the title track, Total Destruction, and the immortal hellish headbanger by the name of Born for Burning. Aggression with a groove, equal parts satanic, savage, and melodic. The day I bought this record by absolute happenstance and chucked it into my car stereo, I have been transfixed ever the fuck since. It never ages, it's never improved upon. 1985, the same year black metal was born and perfected. The return, buy that shit. Don't agree with the list, folks? That's what opinions are for, bitch tits. Nobody has to be a clone of each other. This ain't Sweden. List your top six below, but prepare to duel. I regret nothing. I'm Razorfest until we emerge once more from the mists of the mythos. God fucking speed. And you know, right, right after, <laughs> into, I'm gonna have a, a bath.